What's good YouTube? We're back here today with another top 10. It's been a while since I've done one of these and we start with honorable mentions. Uh, a lot of you are going to be maybe surprised that blue eyes don't make my top 10 cut. But unfortunately, without Alternative Dragon, they've just been doing nothing in the TCG. They've uh, been coming up short of the summit, so to speak. So uh, even with the Dragoonity's engine able to make Clear Wing, or Crystal Wing Synchro, uh, it's it's really just kind of fallen behind. Uh, another honorable mention is actually Necroz. Botang just topped with Necroz. It's been shown really, really with uh, Shiv that... Drowning Mirror Force with Valkyrus is quite the combo and allows for some uh, very, very awesome plays and playback. And uh, it just makes it really hard for Necroz themselves to be touched. And our last honorable mention is going to be the Synchro Fusionist deck. The skill cap that it takes to play the Synchro deck is really high to make it uh, go in the right direction, not brick, and uh, to be able to play out. And sometimes it does just brick on you still even. Uh, we haven't seen it actually capture many results, so we've seen a few regional tops, but uh, I don't think Shiv really helped it much at all. But we know that uh, there definitely are some spicy builds, and it's definitely super interesting to watch. One of the highest skilled trees, I would say, in the game. So first, uh, at number 10, Card of Demise really helped a lot of decks, and I, there's actually three Demise decks here in our uh, top 10. First uh, and 10th place is going to be Yobubus, a.k.a. Yosenju. So, Yosenju stun, as uh, you might know, basically you get to play out your whole hand because the Yosenjus are going to summon each other. And then you play, you set all your spell and traps and play card of demise, get a free plus three. The problem with Yosenjus with card of demise, though, is you play a little higher uh, monster ratio than most demise decks. So, you're liable to, dry, to draw some monsters instead of stuff you can just set. Uh, but in your opening hand, you you also uh, kind of block your back row up with ten keys, and uh, if you get Veilard, your your turn's pretty much over. You're gonna have a Yosenju stuck out with some back row, not be able to play your card of demise. So uh, that's kind of the problems with Yosenju, but they're still very powerful. Took third at Irish Nationals. Uh, the deck's been making appearances, been really high ranked. Uh, I think took first at a Canadian Regionals as well. Uh, Another card in the ice deck is going to be our number nine, and that's a uh, counter fairy deck here. We've got um, the ability to play card of demise with Bountiful Artemis, and uh, you can put Ariadne in scale before you activate demise too, so that all of your costs are free. But the goal is to get an Artemis out and Ariadne in scale and set five. What more can you say about that? Uh, it's a really good deck. It's really solid. It's been all over Dueling Network really really strong and uh of course it does have the ability to brick if you don't get to card demise early but uh or artemis it does have its downfalls but it's still very strong and very hard to beat uh our number eight here is going to be raid raptors raid raptors have been making appearance they have a towers like monster and they have a lot of tools to be able to uh push through for game able to flood the uh field really hard and uh, we've had Raid Raptor profiles on our channel. We've seen them play in the Zodiac Tournament. While they still haven't really had time to accomplish much or done much, uh, the power that this deck outlets and the ability to go really far in tournaments that we've seen from it is definitely impressive comparatively to a few of the past decks. And number seven, Water. Uh, we see this still terrorizing our uh, Zodiac tournaments often making it to top... Uh, the, pa the past two months have made it to top four, even in the entire Shiv format. So definitely huge shout-outs to Water. Their combos are still very strong. Uh, it uh, seems relatively low brick builds thanks to uh, Mori of Greed and even with the loss of Upstart. So definitely some innovation been going on with water if you haven't seen the tournament matches check them out on the channel but they are definitely going pretty strong uh let's go ahead and go to number six we have psi frames and as it says go ahead and play the game uh it makes it very hard to play the game against psi frames and psi frames uh Super reactive deck, but it also has the ability to be proactive with their trap and their field spell. Psyframes definitely put up a lot of things that 
make it hard to deal with the deck in general. Like, they have answers for spells, traps, monsters, attacks, and very strong, strong synchros. Uh, the deck that probably best abuses Psyframe Lord Omega, but... It definitely has huge advantages in this format. We've seen it do really good against Monarchs and other decks. And we've actually seen it take first at a California Regional. So definitely a deck that's in contention and about to get some power-ups too, as we saw today. Uh, and in fifth place, Burning Abyss. So if you're wondering why this is so low on my list is fifth place in the meta. Cherries really does hurt the deck, and as much as you can say they have to draw cherries throughout an entire tournament of many people citing that card, you're going to get hit with it if you're running Burning Abyss, and it's going to be a very uphill battle. And one card being able to take out six to eight cards of your extra deck, two Dantes to three Dantes, two Beatrice, Pilgrim, that hurts, and uh, all from one card. So, definitely... Uh, even with the power of Beatrice, it it got hurt. And it got hurt bad. And in number four, Monarchs. The best deck to never win. Uh, I There's many variants. Domain Monarchs, Extra Monarchs. We're going to combine them here uh, for the sake of time and theory. Since it's a top ten video. But basically, Monarchs are really good. Uh, they have a ridiculous matchup against Cosmo. Uh, they do have a pretty high ceiling with extra deck monarchs, but the problem with monarchs are is that they have hands that draw together that are inconsistent and do not work together. And when that happens, you're pretty much getting attacked. So monarchs end up giving away a lot of free games throughout a tournament. And when that happens, you're eventually going to be outright beat even with an amazing deck. Uh, I would say out of all the meta decks, it's it has the most combination of hands that do not work together. And that's why it's not higher. Now in number three, please make the return thanks to Demise. I honestly was very tempted to put this higher. Uh, Demise Klees have, you know, 10 draw cards, 3 Carter Demise, 1 uh, Upstart, 3 Into the Void, and 3 Dualities. So, it's just amazing how much consistency this deck has. And then you have 3 Summoner Arts and Scout to thin the deck, and then like 17 to 18 traps and only 9 monsters. So, it's it's just really hard to hit this deck, you know, summon a have a scale, have a monster, set five, go, and a lot of them are floodgates. It's it's really near impossible to deal with. And uh the deck's very good. Um it has a lot of tools. It has uh tribute tools with uh soul transition and carrier and helix. It definitely has amazing utility and it's just really hard to beat. Also, you're not able to make many misplays with it because it's very... Uh, you, you, do you flip your Floodgate early or do you save it? Like, that's the kind of choices you have to make. So, uh, and of course against Cosmo, you actually want to activate your rivalries and stuff early. But it's, it's definitely a really good deck. And I think we'll see it evolve even further. I've got some ideas for it. <clears throat> Kaiser Coliseum. But yeah, it's definitely a great deck. And, and number two, now this may be controversial, I am putting Pendulum in second place right now. I think Pendulums are an amazing deck, still have a very high ceiling, still have amazing plays, have amazing toolboxes, probably the best deck out of this entire top cut to abuse Utopia Prime, uh, slash Lightning, uh, really Lightning is what I meant there, my bad, and it's... One of the best decks out there. It's I, I can't just think that's disputable. Even with one Ignister, you can Digusto Emerald back with the way you spam fours. Uh, the Shiv for, uh, format kind of added a lot to it with the Odd Eyes engines and scales. And the Phoenix and the Unicorn are actually very amazing for the deck. So be very wary. Uh, Odd Eyes, Draco Pals... This is the specific deck I would think. And we've also seen a normal build of Draco Pals abusing... Uh, stuff like painful decision so there's two builds out there both having varying success took first place at the houston regionals uh billy topped with it recently definitely a deck to watch out for and and number one cosmo the best combos the most utility to recycle your hands the highest ceiling the most amazing fields but it does have a lot of hard counters in the format but i would say the best main deck would have to be cosmo 
It's just like you have 3,000 untargetable ships. Uh, it's insane. You have a boss monster now that's near impossible to deal with in uh, Dark Planet. And they receive a power up every single set up till now. So they've just been gaining and gaining and gaining. They've been winning events. They won the ARG. Jake D. Finney, shout outs to the card guys. But the deck always just feels like it has that potential to brick. But the thing about Cosmo versus Monarchs when it bricks, it has traps to back it up. And this is a discussion I had with Glasgow Yu Gi Oh! Uh, when Monarchs Brick, you die. When Cosmo uh, does Brick, you have traps to protect you and try to get out of it, with Cosmo Town also able to reshuffle your hand. So, like, you have ways to deal with things and live and grind out and try to live, whereas the other strategy does not. So, uh, that's my top 10. Tell me what you guys thought. Uh, do Blue Eyes deserve to be in the top 10 over, say, Raid Raptors? Uh, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Let me know your top 5 or 10 in order. Uh, I know the top 5 is actually pretty neck and neck, so it's kind of hard to place them. But, uh, I did my best to. Maybe you guys have different opinions. Thanks for watching, guys. And be sure to subscribe.